ראש חודש אדר א', תש"ע, תשפ"ב, איזה עין. And today um, we're going to talk about how to build a home. Um, I'm dedicating this shiur to Refua Shlomar, my good friend, Orna Badalia, בתוך שאר כל חולי עמו ישראל, מי השם send her רפואה שלמה, המושלמת, quickly. So we're going to look at on the parashot and adar and try and see how it's connected to us and to building a home. So the inspiration for this shiur I actually got from a very short video that I watched by Rav Menis Friedman. I don't know if you ever saw him. So I watched like a very short video and I got like a spark of inspiration. I said, oh, now I have some, I know what I'm going to talk about. So here it is. He had a series of videos calling Mashpia or Mekabel, meaning giver and receiver. He's talking about And this is, if you ever want to look it on YouTube, this is where it is. Um, in, in, in short, this is a term in, uh, in the Hasidut that is coming to describe um, our connection with Hashem. And our connection with Hashem is actually um, mirroring or describing or is the essence of every relationship that we have. So from our relationship with Hashem, we can learn about relationships in general. So today we'll try to understand this idea a little bit better, I hope, without Hashem. So we are now in the seventh parasha of Chumash Shemot, the second Chumash, parasha Truma. Truma, if you want to translate it to English, is like giving charity, it's to give something that you don't have to, don't have to give. So, if we're going to go uh, in the chronological order of, of time, this is not where we're supposed to be right now. Because uh, the previous parasha, Parashat Mishpatim, ended with Moshe Rabbeinu going up to Har Sinai after Matan Torah, after Aseret Adibrot, to be 40 days uh, with Hashem. And he's supposed to come after 40 days to discover that Am Israel sinned and made the golden calf. So, uh, this is not where we are right now. So we ended with Moshe Rabbeinu going in with the cloud into the mountain and staying with, uh, with Hashem 40 days and 40 nights. The Pasuk is saying, ויבוא משה בתוך הענן, ויעל אל ההר, ויהי משה בהר, ארבעים יום וארבעים לילה. This is what it says. But what happened after he came down from the mountain, we only gonna read in two parashot forward, when we get to parashat כתיסה. So we have parashat תרומה this week, and next week parashat תצווה, and only then we have parashat כתיסה, with the sin of the golden calf. So the Torah is basically jumping now ahead of time and telling us something that's going to happen, actually supposed to happen in three parashot, not right now. There's a time, sir, time loop that's not supposed to be here. So we, when we see something like that, we have to ask immediately why. Why not the chronological order? Why the Torah decided to change the order and tell us something now that has nothing to do with what happened the last parasha? So we're going to give two reasons, the probably more, but two reasons we're going to give. Um, first of all, the Torah did that because this parasha, parasha Truma, is... Um, describing the building of the Mishkan, building the home for Hashem, which, is, which represents the desire to be in contact, daily contact or connection with Hashem. This is where we are connecting with Hashem. When we have a home to go to, where the Shekhinah is, 
so we can connect to Hashem. So one of, of the Mefarshim is saying that in the bottom line, Cheta Egel was um, an expression of the will of the people to have a connection to Hashem. Yes, it is. Because they thought that Moshe Rabbeinu is gone. Moshe Rabbeinu was their connection to Hashem. They were actually looking for another connection to Hashem. They're coming from slavery. They're coming from Avodah Zarah. They didn't know how exactly they're supposed to connect to Hashem once Moshe Rabbeinu is gone. So they thought they are doing something right. They are building something that's going to be a connection to Hashem. They didn't know they don't need a con- um, um, real tour. <laughs> uh, um, yes, they don't need that. Yes, But this is part of the Mephoshim, what they're saying. So this is one of the reasons. So in a way, this parasha is giving the medicine before the, the blow. Because this parasha is coming to teach us what is the correct way to be connected to Hashem? Not through idols, not through golden calf, not through things, but through another, another measure, another um, object, which is not really object, it's a house, it's a home. It's a home for Hashem where the Shechina can dwell, and this is where we can connect with Hashem. So, this parasha is coming to teach us that in order to connect to Hashem, we need to do it with love. And how we do it with love? By giving. When you give, you actually, when you give with all your heart, this is where you connect to somebody else. Because the house is actually where you, you're building your relationship, your, your marriage with, with your mate, with the couple, right? And this is how we are connecting to our spouses as well. We are connecting by giving. When we give to somebody, we are connecting to this somebody, right? So we have a house which, which has a, a common, a common um, goal to this house, and the Torah is calling it Mishkan. It's a, it's a, house, a house with a calling, a house with a purpose. It's a house where you meet, at a house where you um, connect to each other, and where you dwell together. And this is the Mishkan. And this is also what connects us to Chodesh Adar. Because Chodesh Adar is, uh, the word Adar is comprised of two words. Aleph, which is the meaning of the letter of Hashem, Alufo Shel Olam. Aleph is Hashem, Alufo Shel Olam. And the word Dar. Dar in Hebrew is to live to dwell, to live in. So you can live in a, in a house, so you can be ladur, the ladur is two synonyms in Hebrew. So alufo shel olam, the Hashem, dar, is living right here, live inside here. And it says in our parasha, v'asuli mikdash v'shachanti betocham, you will build, build me this home, Mm-hmm. And I will dwell, ladur, inside of you. Not inside the house. I will dwell inside of you. You're going to build it and I will be inside of you. Meaning whatever uh, actions you're going to do are going to connect me to you in a way that I'm going to be inside of you. I'm going to be a part of you. We're going to connect in a way that's going to be part of each other. So when we're building Mishkan, when we're building a home, it's not mine or his, it's ours. It belongs to us. If it's Am Israel and HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so it belongs to Am Israel and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When it's a house of a couple, it belongs to the couple, to him and to her. It's our home together. So this is where we need to understand that if it belongs to the both of us, None of us can really do exactly what we want to do because we need to find a way to compromise with each other. So each of us have a a way of uh, expressing themselves inside the house where we live. Right? And this is how the parasha basically begins. 
It begins with the Pasuk, I will say in Hebrew and then I'll read the translation. דבר על בני ישראל ויקחו לי תרומה מאת כל איש אשר ידבנו ליבו תיקחו את תרומתי. English. Speak to the children of Israel and have them take for me an offering from every person whose heart inspires him to generosity you shall take my offering. This is a very confusing verse because what exactly is being said here? Hashem is asking for an offering from your heart whatever you desire to give but he is forcing us to do it so this is very confusing are you asking us to give from our heart or are you ordering us to give you how can you give and also it doesn't say in Hebrew um, and also in the English translation it doesn't say give me truma it says Take for me, Truma. Take for, for me. We, it's very confusing. What exactly is being said here? What exactly Hashem wants for us? What exactly is telling us that we can learn from? How can you give from your heart when you're being ordered to do that? And, and besides we have to ask, what for? What for? What does Hashem exactly need from us? Does he really need all the materials to build the Mishkan from us? The Almighty Hashem can bring uh, Bet Mikdash from, from heaven and put it down, down with, without our help. He needs our rugs and, and stuff and, and nonsense. The, 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 all the, the cloth and the, the hooks and the, and the, not the material, orot, how do we say orot, levers, and all, all, all kinds of iron, all kinds of stuff, like, why does it need all of, the, of the, this from us? He can build a, a beautiful Bet Mikdash and bring it down, that's it. Why is he even asking this from us? So, of course he doesn't need it. But there, there is something that Hashem is trying to teach us. There is a message that He's trying to give us. And instead of telling us what the message is, He is allowing us to experience through doing and through our personal experience to learn and understand what it is to be in a marriage. What it is to be in Hebrew you say zugiyut, which doesn't necessarily mean marriage. It's how, what it is to be a couple. What it is to be a couple that lives together. So, to build the Mishkan, to build the, 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 uh, to build the home, the house. So, there is a very um, deep um, idea over here that is uh, concerning not only our relationship with Hashem, but also teaches us about each and every relationship we have with everybody, with our spouses, with our children, with our friends, with our employers, with, our, with everybody. And the idea that is being presented to us now in this parasha is choice, is the freedom to choose, which, which was not there before. This is introduced to us now. Because to build a house, this is something that every couple is doing when they're getting married. And every couple is building their own unique home. Right? It looks the same, but every home is different, it is unique. So there is the need to do something. <clears throat> but the only way to, to fulfill this need of doing something is by choosing to do it. Remember the pasuk that I read to you? <coughs> and how the, how the parasha begins? Remind us again. Speak to the children of Israel and have them take for me an offering from every person whose heart inspires him to generosity, you shall take my offering. Mm -hmm. So we talk, we're talking basically about there's a need to do something but the only way to do this need or to, um, um, to fulfill this need 
is by choosing to do it. So this is where the choice comes into play. Each and every one needs to choose to give as much as they are desire. Right? You have to, but you're choosing to do it according to how your heart is, how much you have uh, in your heart to give. So one can give uh, one rug and another one can give three rugs. Right? Um, the ladies, all the women, what did they bring to the Mishkan? They brought the, the meals that they have in Egypt that may, were made from copper. They used to polish it so they can make themselves pretty for the men so they can get pregnant. And when they brought it to the Mishkan at the beginning, they didn't want to take it from them. And Hashem said, of course take it from them. This is very expensive to my heart, those meals, because they protected the continuation of Am Israel. So they took those meals and made the kiyor, the, the sink, from, the, from those meals. This is the sink where the Kohen Gadol is washing themselves before they're giving sacrifice. So there's a lot of meaning to each and every thing, even if it looks like it's nothing, there's a meaning before it, behind it that was very, very important to Hashem, all those um, offerings. So in the parasha before, parasha Titro, two weeks ago we read, we received Aseret Adibot, the Ten Commandments we got. And according to our Mefarshim, um, our um, commentaries, the Ma'amad Ar Sinai is compared to a wedding. The same as a wedding where Knesset Israel, Am Israel is the bride, the groom is Hashem, and the Ketuba is Luchot Abrit. This is the, the wedding in, in, a, in a big. And it's also said, when a man also say it every morning when they put the tefillin, what Hashem is saying, ve'erastich li le'olam, ve'erastich li b'tzedeg mishpat, b'chesed u'v'rachamim, ve'erastich li be'emunah ve'yadat et Hashem. You know, when they do the three times, should I, do I need to um, translate it? Okay. And I will betroth you to me forever and I will betroth you to me with righteousness and with justice and with loving kindness and with mercy and I will betroth you to me with faith and you shall know Hashem so there's like a, a ceremony that repeats itself each and every day of renewing this covenant between us and Hashem this marriage these vows are being repeated over and over again the same way. So the covenant between Hashem and Am Israel is the same strength and the same meaning that the covenant between a husband and, and his wife. So a lot of times people will ask, for what Hashem needs all these mitzvot, really? Why does He need all those mitzvot? It's so strange, those mitzvot that we're giving in, in Har Sinai. They make no sense. Why does a man need to put fill in, really? What, what's the meaning of all of them? Why do we need to light uh, candles on Shabbat? Why do we need to do Avdalah? Why do we need to wash our hands? What, what are all these strange mitzvot, commandments that we need to do? Which, by the way, according to some of the commentaries, is one of the um, proofs that the Torah wasn't, uh, was written, was given from heavens. Because who would think about such things to do? To ask to, from somebody to do those strange things. It doesn't make any sense for a human being to ask from another human being to do things that makes no sense. No sense, no sense at all. So people will ask, why does Hashem need all this mitzvot that He gave us in the Torah? And the uh, answer is very simple. Mitzvah in, in Hebrew, it's not a commandment. It's, it's come from the tongue of tzevet. Tzevet is a team. It's something that you connect with somebody else. You do something together. Tzavta. 
to gather, מצווה, צוותא to gather. This is what מצווה is. מצווה is bringing us together with השם, basically. This is the way of השם to allow us to be in touch with him. In a very simple words, this is the Shem's phone number. That's it. Imagine that you want to call, I don't know, the President of the United States. You can't reach him unless you have his phone number. You can't. You just can't call him. Nobody's going to give you his number. You can call uh, 411, 114, I don't know. You can call whomever you want. You cannot reach his phone number. You can get his secretary. You can get his office. You can get very close. But you cannot get to him. Why? Because you don't have his phone number. Hashem gave us 613 ways to connect with him. And when we, whenever you, we do a mitzvah, whether we do it with kavana, without kavana, doesn't matter. Whenever we do a mitzvah, at that moment, we are connecting with Hashem. Why? Because this is what he decided. He decided that these are the channels in which we can connect with him. That's it. No other channels, no other ways can be done. And they are strange. Very strange. We cannot explain that, but this is what he wants. So when we ask him, why did he give us the mitzvot? He gave us the mitzvot because he needs us. Why does he need us? Because he wants us. It's not because he cannot live without us. He can live without us. But without us, life has no meaning. Okay, let's try and explain it with our lives, okay? Because we're talking about the shame and stuff. So let's say that the guy is coming to a girl and she's going to ask her, Will you please marry me? I can't live without you. Some may be like it. I think most are going to get really stressed. Because this is really stressing. It's nice that you cannot live with me one day, two days, but after a month, hello, it's suffocating. I mean, please, can you please live on your own two feet and don't... don't uh, <laughs> try to just, I, I, me I'm going to supply the life for you for you this is very stressful marry me because I cannot live without you it's very difficult it's too much responsibility to put on a person that I cannot live without you if you're not going to marry me very stressful and let's say ok so it's not going to be stressful it's going to come in a different uh, approach and it's going to say will you please marry me Um. But my life is going to be great even if you're not going to marry me. Would you marry him? No, this is not nice either. It doesn't excite me. I mean, you want to marry me, but you don't really want to marry me because you're going to be just fine without me. So this is not good, and the other one is not good. We want to be wanted. We want to be wanted. We want to heal... Marry me because I can't li- I can live without you, but without you, my life doesn't mean anything. This is what we want to hear. This is where we want a connection. Not where you suffocate us or you don't care. It's where you can stand on your own two feet, but, you're, but you want meaning to your life, and the meaning is going to come from living or sharing your life with somebody that you love. This is where the meaning is coming. So we are choosing to get married not because it's terrible to be alone. Sometimes it's much easier to live alone than with somebody. But we're choosing to get married because this togetherness gives our life meaning. It's justifying our existence in a way that we cannot do it by ourselves on our own. So, Hashem is perfect. He is full of love. He needs nothing from us, but He has a need to direct this love and energy, and energy towards somebody in order to give meaning to this entire creation. Otherwise, there is no meaning to it. 
same way as, as we talked about the couple. And we were created in the image of Hashem. So it's not like in English, in the image of Hashem, like we took a picture and there's an image. Not this image, not talking about this image. We're talking about the image of the inside of the, of the characteristic of, of, of what Hashem is. So we also have the same need to need. To need somebody. To have the need. Okay, so. In English, there's a need and there's a requirement. Right? And it's different when you use them. In Hebrew, the word is the kek, yod zkukim, is the same when we are zkukim to something from somebody else and we are zkukim to give something to somebody else. It's the same word exactly. The same word exactly we use for both. For giving something to somebody else and taking something from somebody else. It's the same word. So, we actually need those two expressions of, of this world in order, in order for our life to have meaning. That we're going to feel that we justify our existence because otherwise, why are we here? What are we doing here? Did we come here just to be by ourselves? For ourselves? No, this is just half of the equation. We have to have the other half. It's not just me for myself. It's also me for somebody else. And this is the Tumah that Hashem is asking to take from your heart and give as much as you can from your heart. So the Alter Rabbi Admor Zaken, Rav Shneur Zalman, the one that wrote the Tanya, he's saying the Tachlit Briyat HaOlam, the Ehon Tachlit, the purpose, the big purpose of why the world was created is because Hashem wanted, desired to have dira, an apartment, bait, batachtonim, in the lower worlds, because he is over there and we are over here. So, a Kadosh Baruch Hu wants a home here, in this world. Place of residence. Yes. So it's a house. It's a bait, but it's also dira, dira. Again, it's the the dalet and resh that um, from the chodesh adar, a dar, alufo shel olam dar, in the dira. The Hashem uh, is dwelling, re- reside. Okay, this is what it is. So Hashem basically said, I don't want to be by myself. I can. It's not that I cannot be by myself. I just don't want to. I want the meaning, I want this creation to have a meaning and for to have the meaning, I need you. I don't want to be by myself. I don't want to be one by myself. I want to be united with you. So, lo, not yachid, but achdut. Yeah, it's very similar, but it's not the same. I want a connection. And the way to be connected is through doing the mitzvot. So, we so this is his thing. How is this our problem? <laughs> right? I'll tell he you wants the connection. Because he doesn't want to be by himself. How should, why should that, why, have, why should it bother us? What he wants? Because we were created, B'Tselem Hashem, we were created right. in the image of Hashem. So whatever... He, he, his characteristics, we have all these characters right. within us. So we have each other to, 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 to express whatever it is that he expresses towards us. So why do we need a connection with him when we have each other to do that? Because in, in each and every one of, it, of us, there is a spark of Hashem. A soul. So, the, not just a soul. A soul, everybody has. A dog also has a soul. <laughs> we, have, we, have, <laughs> we have a spark of Hashem, or a part of Hashem. So, this spark wants to unite with the source of it. So, we have, each, each and every Jew has a desire that he cannot explain 
to want to connect to Hashem because you want to connect with this part in you want to connect with the other part mm-hmm. all, the, all the parts want to connect mm-hmm. it's like a magnet mm-hmm. you, you, can, you can't resist it it says um, Ner Hashem Nishmat Adam the candle of Hashem is the soul of a human being when you look at the candle and you look at the flame it is, is, is doing like this it, wa- it wants to go up it's, it's want to disconnect itself from the from the material and go up. Where does it want to go? You want to go back to the source, right? So this is this is our um, motivation. This is our desire. What um, moves us to want to do that? To look for this connection. So if um, the, the, so we understand that the third that they brought and all the mishpatim that we read last parasha. It's not just a list of um, commandments. Like it's, in, it's not just a list of commandments. It's a revelation of the will of Hashem. This is what it is. This is how the will of Hashem is revealing itself in our world. Right? What does He need to do? What, he need, oh, what does He need us to do? So His will is going to materialize. So his creation is going to be meaningful like he planned it from, begi- from the beginning. So what does he want? He wants to be in a connection with us. We wa- he wants the connection with us. He wants this world that he created to have a meaning. That it's going to be meaningful. He wants this world to have an, an existence that is meaningful. And this is why he needs us here to do what he wants us to do to this connection so in Ma'amad al-Sinai Hashem is not only revealed himself to us he also revealed him, uh, revealed to us that he wants something that there's a desire that there's a need as if yes a need that he has what makes him happy what makes him his pleasure um and how exactly we can connect to him and how exactly we, we can be his home. So basically the home, the Mishkan that we are building in the desert is how we are becoming his home. It's not the materials that building the home, it's us that gives the material that builds the home which is part of us. It's like something that we, when you give, there's something of you in the thing that you gave. Right? Like, um, excuse me, remind me your name? Ziva. Ziva. You made a cake, right? Yeah, sorry. There's a part of you in the cake. You really want everybody to eat from the cake because you made it, because you gave something of yourself over there and you want to share it with everybody. Right? When we're cooking, why is it so, why we like when people are eating our food? Who cares? We didn't care about the food when we bought it in Gourmet Glat and put it in the bags. It's the same food in the pots. But there's something that we put inside. We put a part of ourselves and this is what we are sharing with other people. Um, and what Hashem really wants is and this is what he asked us, that we choose to be in a, in a connection with him. He wants our choice. He wants us to choose. He wants us to choose one another. Him or one another. So if there is a couple that really have a good connection between each other, but they don't have God in their home. Okay. So technically they are doing the, the bidding of God. If they have a good relationship with each other, they have this give and take, give and take, but they don't have God in, the, in their home. How do you know? Like I'm saying, like meaning, they're not religious people, they don't really follow any mitzvot, they don't really do this. So technically, they are doing the will of God, right? Because they have harmony within each other. Okay. Right? I don't know what's exactly going on in their home, and I don't know if really Hashem is not there. You know, there are four kinds of uh, Jews. This is what we do in Sukkot. We take the four kinds. And what do they represent? They represent four kinds of Am Israel. 
the you have the etrog, the the one that looks like a big lemon. What's the name in English? Etrog. Etrog. Okay. <laughs> so you have the etrog, which has a smell and a taste, meaning it has also mitzvot and Torah. It's complete. You have the uh, hadas, myrtle, I think hadas, that it has a smell but has no taste. So it has mitzvot in it, but no Torah. And you have the um, lulav, which is the tamar, the date, that it has a taste, but doesn't have a smell. So it has Torah, but has no mitzvot. This is, and, and you have the arava, the willow, it has no smell and no taste. But it's still part of Am Israel. And not only that, you cannot do the bracha without all of them together. It's not complete. You cannot bless on the Torah on Arbaat Aminim if you don't have all the four. So maybe you think there's nothing there. Maybe it's Arava. Maybe it's a willow. It has no taste and no smell. No mitzvot and no Torah. But there's still something there. And it's still a part of, 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 the, of the Jewish people. So we're talking about choosing, about Bechira, about choosing. So in Hebrew... The, the, the word to choose is livchor, and when you look about, uh, when you look at an unmarried man, in Hebrew, you know how it's called? Bachur, which is the same root of livchor, and how do you call an unmarried woman? Bachura, which is the same root of livchor, to choose. So they are both still in the stage of choosing. They are in the stage of looking and choosing. They're still bachur and bachura because they are now looking and to choose to livchor their mate. So the choice is the essence of the of everything. This is what the parasha, this parasha is telling us. Because only when I'm doing something for somebody else, out of my free choice, with my free choice. This is the only time when I'm really giving all of me. Nobody's forcing me, and I'm giving all of me because I'm choosing to do that. If I'm not choosing to do that, then it's I'm giving, but it's not all heartedly. What Hashem asked us in the beginning of the parasha is asking us to to take an offering from the heart, meaning you have to choose to do it. So I'm sure you all know the situation when you are not very happy with your husband and when he comes home he is noticing that you are not very happy with him. He has no idea why. He doesn't know what he did wrong. All he sees that you are sour. This is all he sees. And he's starting running around the house doing stuff that you asked him months ago <laughs> and the list is still on the wall doing all kinds of stuff that you didn't even ask him to do just to appease you he has no idea what's going on he just needs this face to change <laughs> you, you don't know this uh, no. <laughs> and right now this is not a, at all what you need from him right at all so he's only annoying you more. <laughs> so he's trying to appease you by checking the list that's waiting six months over there, waiting for you to, to change, and you're only getting more and more <laughs> upset with him. And the question is why? He's actually doing what you asked him to do. Why are you upset with him? Because of how? Because he's not doing it from free will. He's doing it for a reason. And the reason is he needs your face to change. He needs your face to be nice so he can sit and watch TV and feel good about himself. <laughs> this is what he needs. It's because he is not doing this out of, out of his free will. There's a reason why he's decided now to pay attention to the list you're nagging him for six months. This is what's happening. So... You are not the reason. The reason is that he wants you to stop 
making him feel uncomfortable. That's why we are not happy. Even though we really need this list to be done, but not now. Now there's a different story here. So you didn't choose me. You just want me to stop being sour. So here is the thing about the choice. Another example. Think about a woman that wants her husband to bring her flowers every Shabbat. Okay, why? What exactly does she want? What's the real desire over here? She wants him to express his love in a way that he's going to choose to give her what she needs, what she wants, what she desires. This is what she wants. What does she want? Does she need flowers? No. She needs this gesture of him choosing freely to show her that I love you. This is what she wants. The, the title is Flowers for Shabbat, but this is not... Really? Really? This is how you want him to express yeah. his love to you? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> he, okay, you want him to clean the bathroom because you want him to show you that what you need is important. Yeah. That's it. So it doesn't matter whether it's the flowers or the cleaning of the bathroom. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> what, what we need is this gesture of love to feel that we are important that he is paying attention to our need, to what is important to us. So a lot of times I hear this in my office. He doesn't love me, she doesn't love me, he doesn't love me, he doesn't love me. And when we are trying to figure this out more deeply, we are finding out that it's not really the truth. It's not really the truth. What it is that each and every one is expressing the love in a way that the other side doesn't need. For example, I think I already gave this example once. Let's say a husband wants to surprise his wife for her birthday and he's uh, in advance, months in advance, he's uh, um, scheduling um, um, a place in a very, very popular restaurant, very good restaurant that you need to wait months for to get there. He's so happy about the fact that he managed to get a table over there. And when the birthday comes, he's presenting the card with the, with the voucher for the restaurant, and he's so happy about that. And she's looking at that, and she wants to die. <laughs> Why? She doesn't like the restaurant? Because he made a reservation for a, um, a home stick here. I want to stick here. Well, like where you a steakhouse, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. and she's so vegetarian. They always think about themselves, right? No, <laughs> she's vegetarian. <laughs> so why is she not <laughs> happy? <laughs> he thought about her. He planned it in advance. He bought. He did, <laughs> but he didn't give her what she needs. He didn't choose what's important to her. He didn't choose her. He chose himself. Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> As usual. <laughs> <laughs> why is it like that, though? I don't understand. Because, I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> we, we know how we like or how we need to be loved. And usually, if you're not uh, aware of that and you're not, you know, dwelling into it or digging into it, naturally, automatically, you're going to express the love for somebody else in the way that you like to, to right. receive it. It's like the love languages. I don't know if you ever know yes. about those. Yes. But this is what uh, this Gutman is talking about that. So usually, we, this is what we're going to do automatically. You're going to express your love in a way that you like to get love. For example, if you like hugs, you're going to hug people. Right? Right? Yeah, but the husband should know that his wife is 
It was an example. The Chiat or Tal. I'm on a diet. I'm on a diet. I'm not having this and I'm not having that. And then in the morning, he's like, You want to have um, wake up wrap? I'm looking at it. I don't understand. Like, I'm on a diet. For them, it's burgers. You can't have burgers. I'm fine. So, what we need is a communication to figure out what exactly do we need. So, Hashem made it very clear, clear to us what He needs from us. How exactly does He want us to express our love to Him? It's not our way to receive love, but it, this is our way to express the, the love we have for Hashem in His way, not in our way. Right? We're not giving him steaks when he's vegetarian. We're giving him what he needs. So when we're talking about a couples that are blood and flesh, like us, um, a lot of time the ways to get to there is to uh, let the other person know what you need. You need to, nobody is reading minds. We, we need to let the other pe- person know what we need. So, I'm not, it's true, it doesn't feel exactly the same, like being uh, surprised, like he read my mind, he knows what I need, he, like, he knows me so well, and um, he gives me exactly what I need, when I need, um, and it feels like, you know, it doesn't work the same as when he's doing it without me telling him. But the truth is, even when you're telling him what you need, when he's doing it, it's still his free choice. Even if you need to remind him every week, it's still his free choice. And eventually, after you're going to remind him a few weeks or months, he's going to get used to it, and you're not going to need to remind him anyway. And then it's going to be like the free choice that you wanted to begin with. But we need to go through a channel or a period of time that it's not going to be exactly what we want. But if we want to get there, we need to start with communication. We need to give a Sarat Adibot. We need to let the other person know what we need and how we need it and what's important for us. So our connection with the Shem, as we, as we said, is working the same way. Only when I'm doing the mitzvot from my free will, this is when Hashem is giving or getting all of me. Even if I'm not doing it with kavanah, the moment I'm choosing to do a mitzvah, doesn't understand it, don't know why I need to do it, but I'm doing it out of my love for Hashem, He's getting all of me. At that moment... So why do they say if you pray and you don't understand what you're reading and you have no intention but you're just reading it like That's not true. I just read a story today. I don't remember who wrote it about a person that um, um, saved uh, um, his money. Every time he did something he used to get like a very brand new um <coughs> piece of paper of paper money and used to put it in a box and preserve it new, he didn't use it and he wanted to wait until the box is going to fill up and then he's going to go to to the bank and and do something with the money and when he go to the, went to the bank he stood in line and he saw that people are coming to the tailor with all kinds of crumbled dirty used uh, paper money and the teller is taking this and giving them brand new uh, bills of money so he was very happy if the teller is taking those crumbled dirty torn up bills for sure they're gonna take his brand new beautiful money right so by the time he got to the teller and he gave the box the teller told him I'm sorry, your money doesn't worth anything. He said, what? What do you mean? It's brand new money. Look at it. It's preserved. It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's, it's so nice and clean. Why do you want to take it? 
He said, listen, these are very, very old uh, bills. They were out of uh, circulation many years ago. They're worth nothing now. Okay, so this is what the mashal and the nimshal is that um, your tefillot, even if they are crumbled and torn and dirty and doesn't look good, they worth the teller over there is going to give you a brand new uh, bill for that because you did because you did it you didn't postpone it you didn't say I'm not going to do it because I don't have kavana right now because I don't feel it because it doesn't come really from my heart that's not true of course when you do it with kavana it's a whole different story but don't don't do it because you're not concentrated right now you don't have the kavana that you wished you have um, you, you're missing something here Better to do it than not to do it. Right? So, uh, Rav Mani Friedman said that the only reason that Hashem gave us this free choice is so we can use it to choose Him. Right? Because this uh, unity is required, this will, this inner will that without it it's not going to happen. I'm, it's my will to be in contact and the other side's will to be in contact with me. This is how it's working. So the reason that we want to be in touch is only because we want to be in touch with the other person. This is the only reason why it's there. There's a saying in Pirkei uh, Avot, Kol ha'ava she'itluya bedavar, batel ha'davar batel ha'ava. Everything, every every love that is uh, um, conditioned with something, when the something is gone, the love is gone. The ava, the she'enat lo yabe davar ena betulah ena betulah leolam, and a love that is not conditioned on anything, on so even in, it can never be cancelled, can never be gone. Because it's not conditioned on anything. So when the thing that it was that the, when the thing that was the reason for the love is gone, the love is gonna go away. When the thing that is the, the, the thing that um, is gonna be cancelled, if we if I behave that way or behave another way, this is why I'm loved. If I'm not going to behave that way, I'm not going to be loved. So I'm not being loved because who I am. I'm being loved because the way I'm behaving, because what I'm doing, because what I'm saying. I'm not being loved because who I am, because what I am. But if the love is only uh, conditioned in the will or the need to be with each other, then there's no reason for the love to dissipate or disappear or being cancelled because it doesn't depend on anything it's not conditioned on anything so in a relationship when we give each other to one another this is the purest way of expressing love because we're giving love to the other person because of the other person not because anything that we are getting from them I didn't marry him because he's smart. I can find a lot of smart people in the library. <laughs> right? And I didn't get married with him because I want love. Right? Because I married love, not him. Love is is a um, result of us wanting to be together. I married him because I want to be with him. And he married me because he wants to be with me. All the rest of the reasons to getting married are wrong. They are putting conditions on the relationship. And then it's hindering the relationship. And then it's making all kind of cracks and it's not good. The, our need to get you to be united with somebody else was imprinted in us by Hashem. Because this is who He is. It says in the Midrash, on the Pasuk, 
ויאמר השם אלוקים לא טוב היות האדם לבדו אעשה לו עזר כנגדו. It's not good for a person to be by himself I'm gonna make uh, him עזר כנגדו. How do you say it? Somebody to help him against him. Against him for help him. This is the tenth um, saying You don't know how to say it in English? In English? As you can said, said it, it's like, a, it's like a helping, with helping him. against him. Against, against him, not, not with him. Against him. With him is the same sex. Against him, the two female and a male. You challenge him, is that right? Yes. Against, it's not like two teams of sport against each other. Right. Against meaning um, push back. Back to no, and, only su- and also support, to support. right? It's like, the, it's like against each other, so we are supporting each other when we're leaning against each other, right? So basically what Hashem is teaching us is how to be in a healthy relationship, how to have a healthy relationship. A healthy relationship is when a couple is choosing to be with each other. And want to do it for So you're saying a person's soulmate is chosen before they were born, right? So what happens if this couple, they met each other, they got married, and now the Neshama is one whole? What happens when they get divorced? You know that the word um, get, which is the word for divorce in Hebrew, is the only Hebrew word that those two letters are together. Gimel and Tet, get. There's no other word in Hebrew that you have those two letters together. Wow. This is how much it's rare in, no, the, in, rare. in the Hebrew language. Mine tag, the word. Tag is tough. And it's also not Gimel Tet. It's tough Gimel. Also, I heard, and I didn't check it like deeply, I heard that there's more than one, not just one. No, they, so I, I had this conversation with the rabbi. The first okay. Thing, so the rabbi said to me, the first person that you married is the person that was created for you, your fish share. Okay. The second person that you marry is based on the midot that you do through life to deserve that person. Okay. So it's not your besharet, but it's based on the midot that you do to deserve that person. Okay, I, again, um, I didn't uh, investigate it deeply, but this is what I heard. So, you know that Hashem created the word, the word in ten, ten times that He spoke. Asara ma'amarot. Ten times He said, Vayomer Hashem, Vayomer, Vayomer. Ten times. The tenth time was, Lot of Yota Adam Levadon. Not good for a person to be by himself. And it's also said, Beito Zoishto. His home, it's his wife. It's the same thing. So, when, when Hashem created the, the Adam Rishon, the first Adam, and he said, it, it says in the Torah, Vayivra Elokim et Adam Betzalmo, in his image, Betzalem Elokim Bara Oto, in his image he created him, Zachar and Nekeva bara otam. A male and a female, he created them. So the Midrash is explaining to us that Adam Rishon was androgynous. It was a male and a female together in one. And they were connected back to back. And then Akadosh Baruch Hu put them to sleep, put Adam Rishon to sleep. And the word that the, the Torah is using is... Um, Like this. Saw them. Saw them, yeah. Saw them and separate them and then they he um, flipped them to stand face face to face. This is a Ezer Kenegdo. Now I'm face to face. I'm gonna be I can help when I'm not back to back but face to face. So now we should ask what is all this uh, circle. If we were already created one, we already created one, 
male and female. Why did Hashem need to separate us and bring us all the way over here? So over here we're going to choose uh, each other and be united again to be one again. What is the... What is the... the what, what for? What for? What for? This for us to make a choice. A free di- choice. Bidiyuk. Exactly. Hmm. Bidiyuk. Because this time... We are doing it out of free will. And by doing it for out of free will, we are um, materializing or doing what Hashem intended to begin with when He created the world. So we can choose freely. Not just do it. Because also we can, we can say the same thing, right? Only when we do it out of choice, we are creating a perfect human being. So this is what we started to say. Kol ish asher idveno libo tikhu etrumati. Every man is going to give according to the generosity of their own heart. And this is how we're going to take the charity that you give. And this is how we make a room for Hashem to live in this world. And this is Chodesh Adar. A, Hashem, Aleph, Dar. Here, dwelling here. Ve'asu li mikdash ve'shachanti betucham. And they shall make me a sanctuary and I will dwell in their midst. Not in the mikdash. In their midst. I'm going to be inside of them. And this is the only way for us to, to unite, to be one, when we are choosing to do this, to be together. And this is actually a daily choice. Also in a marriage, and everybody that is married knows that, that is a daily choose, choosing. You have to choose it anew every day, to be together, to choose each other. And this is why we call this emuna. Faith. In Hebrew is emuna. Because emuna comes from the word in Hebrew, imun. Imun is training. You have to train every day on the same thing in order to have emuna. This is how you get it. If you don't work on it, it disintegrated. If you don't work on the relationship and you don't choose every day anew, you are drifting away from each other. You have to work on it. You have to make the space for each other. You have to choose each other every day. Because every time I give for myself, I put something of myself in the other person. And this makes us one. And this has, this connects us. And Rav Eliyahu Dessler always said that Ahava itoladata netina. Love is the descendant Toledah. It's like the key. The key. No. Well, then you're right. It's like the descendant. Of descendant, child. descendant of love, descendant of giving. Yeah. When, when you give, you give. When you give, you actually give birth to love, not the other way around. It's not like I love whoever gives me. I love whoever I give to. Well, Manus Friedman says the more you give, the more you love. Okay, but this is the Rabbi Yahu Dessler was before him. <laughs> okay, all of them say, the more you give, the more you love. Yeah. Love comes from giving, not... not yes, giving not from the love. You yes. You love because you give. Yes, okay. yes. So this connection that we're talking about, this Shechina, that Mishkan, what we're building, is a holy connection, it's a holy Chibur. And, and, and it's being made... Through, it's a spiritual connection that is made out of materials, like the Mishkan. It comes the the I don't know how to say the words in English, the cloth and the cooks and the whatever the wood was giving. It's all materials, but the materials are building something spiritual. This is what we do, and this is how we are bringing Hashem into this world. We're using materials to bring spirituality. This is what the Mishkan is teaching us. 
um, the, the sign of the Chodesh Adar is fish. It's the last month of the year because Nisan is the first month of, of the year. And um, there's a Sgula uh, which is written like in very old books, like 1,000 years old books that they said that whoever is going to do it is going to see a lot of happiness uh, in, in her life. And the zgula is to take a piece of paper and to paint on it fish, two fishes, and to write, Mi shenichnas adar marbin besimcha, adar mazal dagim. She did that last yeah. year. Alright, so write it down in the chat exactly where she goes. So, I'm. 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 i am i am i am i am and also, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. And also, it should be hanged in a, a central place, like in the entrance, the kitchen, whatever. And <clears throat> if you're going to live it the entire year, you are um, guaranteed shlom bite throughout the entire year. You're not concentrated. She's not a good student. Really? What was? She's not a good student. No. So 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 okay so I can I can I can send you I can send you in the group there's there's one that I'm hanging in my home so I can send it in the in can the you send us a picture okay. yes of course I can and I, I want to see the whole person so what, is, what how special is it if you give birth on um on the Shadow? I don't know, but I know that Chodesh Adar is a, is a good Chodesh because it's Chodesh and Nafechu. But whatever is... It's special every time you give birth. Yeah. Why not? Why not? I put, I put it in the... Okay. Not the web. Okay. So this is what I have in my home. This... You do this or you? No, my pito. I'm gonna make it myself tomorrow. I I I'll send it to you. You can print it. And you you can print it. In the entrance, in the entrance of the house. As soon as you open the door, in your face. Keep it on all year round. I keep it on yes. What did it say? What did it say? Wait, but you put it on. Two fishes. No. Wait, but you I didn't buy it. Uh, I printed it. You put it now, Adar. Adar. Just for one month? Where should I have money? You keep for the this whole year, year, year two, two months. You use it for the whole year. Okay, this is for Adar. If you want to guarantee Shlom Bike, leave it all year. Can you make one yourself? Yes. It's literally still on our Yes. You can paint your own. You can get with the children and draw. Yes. We're doing tomorrow. Yeah. Send it to the point. So, see. So, for to conclude, Arab Yoni Lavi is saying that it's very nice to look when we're talking about Simcha. We talk, we're looking on children. Children usually, they fight with each other, but they make up really fast. Yes. Adults, on the contrary, can have fights for years. Like forever and ever, they're holding a grudge. And he said, why? Why is that? He said, because children, what's important to them is to be happy. And adults, what's important to them is to be right. Okay, you're going to repeat that right now. So, <laughs> when a child... No, seriously, you're going to repeat that right When a now. child wants, his desire is to be happy, and he sees that the fight is pushing the happiness away from them, so he puts the fight in the side and he wants to be happy. But an adult that wants to be right can keep the, uh, this call until 
the end of the, uh, the end of days. But he is pushing the simcha away from him, right? Yes. Say it again from the beginning. A child, it's important for them to be happy. So when they're having a fight, it's putting the happiness away from them. So they make up quickly because they want to be happy. Uh, however, adult wants to be right. So when they're having a fight, they can keep the fight forever and ever. And, and this is how they, we push happiness away from us. You could be right or you could be happy. You sometimes Something be like that. Yeah. Sounds like Rachel Shaul. So, so in, in this, this Chodesh, Chodesh Adar, and this year we have two, Adar Aleph and Adar Bet, Shana Mo'uberet, we have a pregnant year. Yeah. So we have an opportunity to get, to be connected to happiness really easy. Because it's here, it's in the air, right? It's, it's here. You take the letters of Besimcha and you scramble them and you have the, the, the word Machshava to think. Meaning that in order to get to Simcha you have to invest a little bit of thought in it. A little bit of thought, a little bit of work, a little bit of effort. It doesn't come easy. This is how we started. It doesn't come easy. So we have to work on it. Besimcha, start with Machshava. And I wish all of you and all Am Israel Chodesh Mevorah, Chodesh Tov, Chodesh Sameach, Sorot Tovot, Yeshuot, Nechamot, Refuash Lemale, Kol Mishet Tzarich. Amen.